from Craig Stocks Arts. I want to talk today about one of the gotchas that's hidden in Lightroom and you may or may not have run into the problem. Uh, you may have run into it and not noticed it or you may have run into it and just not understood what was happening. It has to do with the way Lightroom handles color spaces and the way that those color spaces get converted into a JPEG or a PSD or a TIFF or some other output file that you might want to work with or send off to be printed somewhere. One of the things I struggled with in putting this tutorial together is I'm forced to record the tutorial on my laptop screen and my laptop screen is not capable of showing all the colors that we're going to be talking about so they won't be recorded in the video and even if they were uh, I don't know that your screen would necessarily be able to see all the colors even if they made it through the translation through the video. So to some extent we're going to be talking about details and colors that we can't actually see and in fact that's part of the tutorial is how do you deal with with those colors that you can't see and how do you know there's colors you can't see. It's a little bit like how do you know if you've run out of invisible ink. So that's part of the challenge that we're going to be dealing with today. I will post a written version of this information along with some photos that you can download to see the details I'm talking about on the tutorials page of my website. So feel free to go to my website at craigstocksarts.com and check out this and other tutorials. So let's start in Lightroom and we're looking here at the uh, Lightroom public beta of Lightroom version 4. Uh, and we'll come back to this at the end and talk a little bit about why we're using it. But the photo we're looking at is a sunset that we had a few weeks ago that was particularly dramatic and I wanted to capture the, the colors. and the. Uh, it's not a great photo but it has a lot of intense colors in the clouds here. And You can see from the processing that I haven't done much to process this image. It's pretty much the way the camera gave it to me. If you're familiar with the histogram, it shows the distribution of colors and values ranging from pure black all the way to pure white and the height indicates how many pixels have that particular value. And you can see there's red, green, and blue values here. This warning tells me that I have quite a few areas that are going to pure black. In other words, zero, 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 red, green, and blue. And that's okay because this isn't really the area that I'm wanting to focus on. Having that silhouetted against the sky is, is fine for this picture. In particular though, I want to pay attention to the bright side of the histogram and I want to make sure that nothing goes to 255, 255, 255 or in Lightroom it would be shown as all three channels at 100%. Because once you go to 100%, you can't go beyond 100 and if there's any detail that was at 90 or 95% or 98% and you drive that detail up to 100, you lose all of that detail. So for instance, if I just drag the exposure way to the right, you can see that we lose all this detail in the sky. And we obviously don't want to do that. That's just for illustration. So let me undo that. But at this point, we would look at this picture and look at the histogram and feel like everything is fine. Nothing is blown out. I've got detail throughout all these fine wispy clouds. And not only is the color important, the texture of these clouds is important in the picture. So typically what you would do then is go to File, Export, and you might export a JPEG. So you would come down to your file settings and you might set this as a JPEG. And it would probably default to sRGB as the color space. But if you look at the drop down, there are actually three main choices. sRGB, Adobe RGB 1998, and Profoto RGB. And these are progressively larger color spaces. In other words, sRGB is the smallest. It has the the least saturated colors available. And it's typical of uh, most, most monitors can only display sRGB colors, some even less. Uh, my laptop, for instance, is less than sRGB. The web, in general, anything on the internet is generally done in sRGB. JPEGs are almost always done in sRGB. Um, if they're not, they're assumed to be most of the time. And if you're sending your photos out to a printer like MPix or White House Color, 
generally they will ask that you send photos in the sRGB color space because their printing process with light jet type printer, printers uh, can only handle the sRGB color space. Adobe RGB 1998 is larger. It includes more intense saturated colors and it's more in line with what you can get out of a modern inkjet printer. So if you're doing inkjet prints you actually can print colors that you won't be able to reproduce through a, uh, a light jet or a commercial lab. Uh, if you have a, a high-end monitor uh, it probably can display all of the colors in the Adobe RGB color space. Profoto is the largest color space and it can it can encompass almost all of the colors we can see. There are still colors we can see that it can't handle, but it is the largest normally, uh, you know, generally used color space. The danger that you have when you work with it is you can have colors in your image that you can't see, hence details you can't see, and if you can't see it, how do you work with it? You know, that's one of the challenges of working with these different colors and particularly in different monitors. So typically you would export a JPEG and an sRGB. You might also, what I've done here for comparison, I've also exported a PSD in the Profoto RGB color space for comparison. And in fact I already have those exported so let's jump over to Photoshop and here's where we start running into problems of not being able to see what we want to see. That if I look at this on on my my larger monitor, uh, if I look at the Profoto version versus the sRGB version, I see a lot of difference in detail, particularly in this area. In the JPEG sRGB version, this area just becomes flat whereas the Profoto version still has lots of detail in here. And what's happening is when we do the conversion, even though we didn't have any blown out colors in any of our red, green, or blue channels in Lightroom, Lightroom is working in a very, very large color space, larger even than Profoto. And when you convert, when it converts into sRGB, it goes through kind of a, a standard algorithm to do that conversion. And in the process, some of our colors blow out. And let's look at a, a simple example. Here's just a simple bright blue to bright red gradient. And if we look at the histogram, now this is in Profoto RGB. If we look at the histogram, we can see that nothing is blown out. We've got lots of headroom on the bright side, lots of room on the tail side. Uh, the reds are more or less in the middle middle half or two-thirds maybe of the histogram. So lots of room in the reds, lots of room in the blues. But if I convert this photo, just convert to profile and convert it from profoto to sRGB. Now on the screen we won't see a difference and that's because of the screen, not because the colors didn't change. In reality, if you looked at this on a, on a better monitor, you would see the colors change. But now if we look at the histogram, lo and behold, our red has been expanded and we now have blown out colors in the red channel that have been driven all the way to 255 and a number that have been driven to zero where we've lost detail. The green channel, likewise, we've driven some of that to zero. So we've made significant changes in the way the colors are going to be displayed and we've lost detail. We've, we've blown out highlights in the red channel. We've changed the colors. So lots of things that maybe you didn't expect to happen have happened in that conversion. And while this is a contrived set of colors to look at, it happens with other pictures as well. A way to anticipate what's going to happen, and let's just change this back to the Profoto version. The trick to doing this is to use the gamut warning feature. It's part of the soft proofing. So if you look under the view menu, you have a proof setup, and right now I have my proof setup set to sRGB as the, the thing I want to preview. And if I turn on the gamut warning, it shows a gray overlay over all of the colors that it won't be able to translate 
and maintain the same look of the color from the Profoto color space into the sRGB color space. Yeah. So those are the areas that we need to pay particular attention to because they're going to change and perhaps blow out when we do the conversion. You can also, if you're interested, you can look at well what happens on my uh, laptop. And you can see my laptop has even fewer colors that it's able to display properly. So one of the things that tells me is I should not use my laptop for any serious photo editing because I can't see the colors that are there, therefore I'm not going to be able to edit correctly. However, if I look at this, this range of colors for my larger monitor, even it's much better, but there's still some regions that are going to be out of gamut, so I need to be careful even with the larger monitor to make sure that I can actually see everything I'm dealing with. So let's switch over to the Pro Photo version of this image, and let's turn on our gamut warning for sRGB. We'll turn on gamut warming and we can see all these gray areas now. And this is showing us areas that are going to lose detail when we convert to sRGB. And we know that that happens because the colors are generally more saturated than sRGB can handle. So a couple ways to deal with this. If I just do convert this to sRGB, we know these areas are going to lose detail. But we, what we want to do is rein in the more saturated colors, but still keep saturation everywhere else. And one tool that we can use for that is the Vibrance Adjustment Layer. So let's add a Vibrance Adjustment Layer. And the way Vibrance works is it increases the saturation of the less saturated colors, uh, but it leaves the more saturated colors more or less alone. The Saturation Slider changes the saturation of all colors, whether they're already saturated or not. So if we use the Saturation Slider and just reduce the saturation, we can get rid of those gamut warnings, but at the expense of saturation throughout the image. If we use the Vibrance slider, we can restore saturation back to the areas that are less saturated. And what I've found is, for this image, somewhere around 20, 24, uh, that there's kind of a happy medium and you can just flip this on and off to see if you're getting a good balance. And We can see that one thing that's happening is the image is getting darker. If I change my blending mode to saturation, that keeps the, the colors and the saturations, for instance if you look in this region, it's staying pretty constant. I'm not losing the colors of the saturation. Uh, what I'm doing is really just reining in these areas that are overly saturated and out of gamut for the sRGB color space. I can go a step further to rein these in uh, by selectively working on these areas. And a way that I like to work on those is if you look at the channels, if we look at the red channel, and of course the channels are, are just black and white versions, there's lots of contrast and lots of detail in the white areas. The green channel has appears to have even more detail in this area, and the blue channel doesn't have much at all. So what I'd like to do is grab this green channel and use it to paint in detail in those areas that are going to be out of gamut to bring them back in, but still retain all of the detail. So I'll do Control A to copy, to select all of this channel. Control C to copy and then go back to the layers channel palette and add a blank layer and paste in that green channel <coughs> which comes in as a black and white. I'll change the blending mode to multiply which now uses that detail to darken everything. Uh, we don't really want to darken everything so let's add a layer mask and I'll just press Control I to invert that so now we're back to where we started, but we have a layer mask over this, this green channel that we can now use our brush. I've got a soft edge brush at about 20% opacity, and if I just paint over these areas, 
you can see that we're painting in the detail and we're bringing those areas back into a set of colors that are within the gamut of the sRGB color space. And if we turn our gamut warning on and off, we can see if we've got any other areas. That looks pretty good. So what this is telling me now, if I convert get on the right document. So this is telling me now I have all of these colors will translate properly in, into sRGB. So let's try that. Let's just quickly convert this to sRGB and it will this is checked to flatten the image to preserve the appearance and that's fine. So now we flatten the image. If we look at our histogram, you can see that we don't have anything blown out, but yet we've maintained the look overall, but we selectively, through that vibrance layer and through painting in some details, we've managed these areas that would have been out of gamut so that they stay in gamut and convert properly. By comparison, if we look at the sRGB version, we have quite a few areas that are blown out, so those areas have lost detail. That's how soft proofing can help you identify that problem before it gets you, and how you can use a vibrance layer and some selective burning and dodging. Uh, in this case, I used the green channel to darken these areas to so that I'm burning in detail to keep those areas in gamut so the conversion doesn't lose detail. Now I said we'd come back to the Lightroom 4 public beta. It has soft proofing built in. So you now have the option to go under view and soft proofing and show proof. And what happened is the histogram is now showing a, a soft proof version. In this case it's set for sRGB with the uh, relative color metric intent and it's showing us these areas that are going to lose detail when we convert to sRGB. So you have the ability to preview and anticipate where those problems might happen and you have the same saturation and vibrance sliders to deal with it globally much like we did in Photoshop. So the, the good news is with the, the coming version 4 of Lightroom, uh, it won't just be a surprise. You'll be able to preview what's happening. But if you've noticed that happening in the past where the pictures on the screen look great, but then when you print them or send them to a printer or look at them on the web, they don't look right. They've got large areas that are just blocked up. That's why it's happening. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me at craigstocksarts.com and Good luck.